This is Sky Sports. We're at Anfield for football, fun and memories with one of Liverpool's finest, Steve Nicholl. Yes, Liverpool pays tribute today to Steve Nicholl, who's had 12 glorious years at Anfield. His testimonial, Liverpool against a Great Britain eleven, is our live football today. In glorious sunshine, there's a healthy crowd here. There's some really big names on view, including King Kenny. And Waddle goes for goal! What a start! And there's more, as they say. What a treat it'll be to see Kenny Dalgleish back in Liverpool red today, wearing that number seven shirt. Going on behind us right now, or just finished, in fact, I can see over there, yeah. Um, a celebrity, a pro-celebrity game. The likes of, what, Phil Thompson, Alan Hansen, Alan Kennedy all putting on jerseys again. There's Alan Hansen. And moments ago, a goal from a fellow that they used to call super sub in these parts, David Kennedy. Venables, we had a glimpse of. He's managing the Great Britain 11. And there's Fairclough, David Fairclough. Lost none of it, has he? And our guest here today, the rock around whom it was all built, Ron Yates. Welcome, Ron. Nice to see you. Thanks very much, Richard. What was it Shanks used to say? He's a colossus. Go and have a walk around him. He did, but if, unfortunately for me, he said it when I was coming out of the bath. So, I, you know, when the reporters were walking around me, I didn't know if they were saying he's a big lad or what. <laughs> <laughs> it was embarrassing. Chief scout here now, so I, I suppose down the years you must have worked and, and played with most of them, and you, you surely have got some glorious memories of the place. I have, I've got some great memories, and I still enjoy, you know, I am chief scout, I've been for the last seven years and I've only cost them 20 million, <laughs> and people see how you're enjoying your job, Ron. I do enjoy my job, honestly, I, I do. I, I still get a buzz when we win, and I'm still very, very disappointed when we get beat. Not everybody's favourite, I suppose, in the first team, because you're always looking to replace them, aren't you? That's right. You know, I, I, in the past, you know, when I was a player myself, I never, I, I never really liked the chief scout of any club, you know, because obviously their job is to replace the players that's there. But I got on well with most of the lads at, at Liverpool, and, and, I, and I make sure that I do get on well with them. It's great to see a, a, a sizable crowd at Anfield today for Steve Nicholl, one of Anfield's finest. What, what have you got? It really, to you know. Uh, through the years, you know, I don't think Steve got the credit uh, he possibly uh, should have got, you know. I think he was an incredible player, you know, he played in most positions, uh, and he played well in most positions. Uh, to only get sort of 27 caps, I think, for Scotland was ridiculous. Uh, he was a super player. Should have been 127, really. I, I would have thought so, you know, I don't know he's that old, but, you know, he could have had his 127. <laughs> but he, he was a super player, and a nice man as well. That's Ron Yates speaking about Steve Nicholl with one or two other thoughts as well on the Scottish international who gets his testimonial at Anfield today. I mean, throughout the game, if you asked all the managers, the first guy that they would pick if they could uh, have a player from another club, I think would be him. I mean, he's, he doesn't just play in different positions. He's outstanding in all those positions. And uh, he's been a tremendous asset to the club over the years, there's no doubt. Looking forward to this afternoon? Yeah, well, I'm a bit rusty, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> He's definitely been one of the best fullbacks this country and has played in English football for, you know, the last ten years, easy. It's interesting you describe him as awkward because that's how he described you as awkward. It's probably how we get on well, isn't it? Um, 
that's it. We have Roy Suzanne what as well. So that's probably why we've had some good battles over the years. But uh, we don't look the most elegant players. But uh, you know, we, we, I, I, I'd like to think Steve gets his job done like I got mine done. When he first came to Anfield, he said that you were one of the great influences on him and, and helped his early career. Very kind of him to say it. He didn't help the work that Graham and Alan Hansen and I done. We tried to get the people in here to believe that Scottish people were half sensible. But he destroyed that myth within a day of his signing. But um, we, we, anybody that came into the dressing room at that time were given uh, as much help as he possibly could. Um, he was a young lad coming down from Scotland and obviously the three Scottish lads took it upon themselves to try and look after him a little and try and educate him a little. The educational part of it was quite difficult but we tried our best to look after him and as to his credit he's turned out as good a player and as great a servant to, to a great club as what he was. How much are you looking forward to pulling on a red Liverpool shirt and playing again in front of the Colt? Well if you ask any manager it's the best part of your career is playing. So uh, fortunately when it comes along to these things you get the opportunity to play. But the jersey hopefully is a little bit bigger than what it was when I used to play here. And if it's not, I'm going to have trouble getting in it. But I just look forward to playing. Everybody enjoys it. And I just say, just hope you don't embarrass yourself. Well, it'll be great to see Kenny Dalgleish back at Anfield. A whole host of names turning out to pay tribute to Steve Nicholl. And in the tunnel with more is Nick Collins. Nick, good afternoon to you. Richard, hello. I've got no uh, pink team sheets from the referee. But what I can show you is the Great Britain shirt that the players will be wearing this afternoon. Steve Nicholl, Liverpool v Great Britain testimonial, it says there. Uh, on the back, uh, number five, Smiley. It's meant to be Steve Bruce, apparently. He's still not here yet. They're a little concerned, but I doubt whether they'll go out with ten players. We'll take a look at the two teams now. We'll start with the Liverpool lineup. Now, of course, Bruce Grubler's away on World Cup duty with Zimbabwe. So in goal for Liverpool will be David James. At number two, Scott Patterson, a young uh, defender that comes into the side. Julian Dix, Steve Nicholl, of course, the beneficiary at number four. Picnic. Charnock, Dalgleish at seven, that will really uh, bring back memories, won't it? Kenny Dalgleish wearing his favourite number seven shirt and Sammy Lee at number eight. Mo Johnston, at, former Everton player at number nine. Don Hutchison at ten and Paul Stewart at eleven. Moving on to the uh, Great Britain side and uh, a few big names here. Mark Bosnich in goal, though, that's a bit of a surprise. He's from Australia, isn't he? Nevertheless, he's in the Great Britain team. Keith Curl of Manchester City, Alan Wright of Blackburn. Richard Goff from Rangers is the captain. Steve Bruce, provided he turns up. Yes, apparently he's just arrived, we hear. Peter Reid of Southampton in the side, too, in midfield. Paul Davis of Arsenal. John Walk Ipswich. Dwight York from Aston Villa. Chris Waddle of Sheffield Wednesday. And Steve McMahon of Manchester City, the team managed by Terry Venable. So they are the latest team news. Back to you, Richard. Nick, thank you. Good crowd in the sunshine. Steve Nichols, very fortunate that it stopped raining. We're delighted to be here, too paying tribute to one of the game's greats with live football on Sky Sports very shortly now. Welcome back. You can see that we're in Great Britain's dressing room at Anfield for Steve Nichols' testimonial. Terry Venables is the manager today. Having a closer look at who we've got in there. Terry's team talk pre-match. He said himself he's a little rusty. <laughs> nice to be back involved today. Live football on Sky Sports. Steve Nichols' testimonial from Anfield. No match programme today, but we thought we'd get Steve to give us one or two words about himself. Hi, I'm Steve Nicholl and I'm 31 and I'm standing on the most famous terrace in the world, the Cop. My favourite player would have to be Kenny Douglas. Uh, I know you'll give me stick for this. Uh, thanks for all your help, both on and off the park, Kenny. And uh, we'll get you the next thing. Cheers. Injuries. I've had one or two. A few stitches in the head. Broken jaw. Shoulder up. One in the stomach. 
Oops, one in there, one in the knee, and a couple of jabs in there just for a good measure. Have I finished yet? No, it's not Bruce, it's me. Thanks for all the laughs over the years, partner. You are the number one. My hardest opponent would have to be Chrissy Waddle because I knew what he was going to do it, and he did it, and he still got past me. Best and worst moments. I think the worst has to be losing 2-0 here at Anfield in the last match of the season to Arsenal. Disaster. The best moment, two weeks previous, FA Cup final after Hillsborough. Great match, great win, great day. I have a few superstitions, and the main one being Touch the Anfield thing. We don't touch that, we are in trouble. That's been a superstition handed down through many faces down the years at Anfield. Ron Yates, who was, what, Shankly's second signing, Ron? Yeah, yeah Ian St John was his first. There's a few of you done that as you've taken to the field here, isn't there? Oh, very much so, very much so. It was a, a real superstition, that, you know, I used to touch it every home game. I was just looking around the crowd here in glorious sunshine, Anfield today. A very loyal footballing public in this part of the world. Always prepared to dip into their pockets on occasions like this and say thank you to the likes of Steve. Nichols. There's no doubt about that. You know, I, I occasionally I don't know where they get the money from, Richard, but they, they do come here. You know, our last two seasons, as an example, you know, our average year has been 37,000 people. Which is terrific, isn't it? It's unbelievable. But, but I mean, they're doing that, and as I say, turning out for one or two of these a season, because players do tend to stay around at Anfield longer than most other clubs, don't they? <laughs> they do, there's no doubt about that. You know, I, I got a testimonial, Ian St John got a testimonial, Roger Hunt got one. You know, I think uh, seven of our team in the 60s got testimonial. All part of the pre-match entertainment there, that's our match referee today, Keith Hackett. That's a natty New Jersey, isn't it? With his name on the back too, look. <laughs> That's a nice touch. How they spell Hackett there? Yeah. <laughs> Liverpool's dressing room on the left there. The visitors, Great Britain on the right. Are you ready, gentlemen? Are you ready, you lot? Are you ready, then? I'm not sure who his assistant is, Mr. Hackett, but uh, she's making herself busy down there. <laughs> Quite all right. Quite all right. Are you looking? Peter Reid, the former Manchester City manager, won championship medals with Everton, stood on the cop as a boy. He won't thank me for mentioning that, but it's true, isn't it? Yes, he did. You know, his whole family are Liverpoolians. Trouble with a manager here. <laughs> we got trouble with a manager here. <laughs> Football, fun. Few memories at Anfield today. It's Steve Nichols' testimonial match. I just caught a glimpse in there of the number seven jersey. Kenny Dalgleish wears that today. He must have won the lot down the years, Steve Nichols. European Cup medals. He was part of that double winning team, of course. FA Cup medals, obviously. League Cup medals. And just looking at the list of the managers that he's played under, Ron. Willie McLean before he came south, Bob Paisley, Joe Fagan, Kenny Dalgleish, Graham Souness, Jock Steen, Alex Ferguson, and Andy Roxburgh. It's not bad, is it? Yeah, it's not bad. They all, they all must have saw something on him. You know, and uh, he has been a wonderful servant to Liverpool and Scotland. Who was it that spotted that he was more than a fullback? Because he's filled virtually every position at Anfield, hasn't he? I think in training, you know, he used to, he used to love being a forward. You know, in the five-a-side games, and he would stick a ball in the net. You know, more than often. And uh, I think suddenly they were uh, looking for a midfield player. Thought about him, stuck him in midfield, and he did a wonderful job. Chris Waddle made reference to the size of his feet. He does have huge plates of meat, doesn't 
I think it's size 13s. Now, I've, I've never known a player to have size 13s in my life, but he has size 13s. A great touch as well, and it's usually the there is. It's usually the players with little feet, the, the touch merchants, isn't it? But uh, Nickel can compete with the rest of them on that front. Oh, right? yeah, very much so. Now, there is a sight. <laughs> Are you coming, George? Former Liverpool manager in a shirt. <laughs> he requested to be just a little larger today. Actually, he hasn't put a pound on, Ron, has he? My golfing partner, Richard. You play a bit of golf with him, dear? Yes, I do. We still play golf together, and uh, we're unbeaten in two years up to now. But he's still playing off 24, isn't he? Well, he's not better quite. Than that. Not quite. I think he's <laughs> off 10, but very competitive. But you'd expect that, because that's a theme, another that's run through the Anfield dressing room down the years. The will to win, great desire. Oh yeah, very much so. Richard Goff, who skippers the Great Britain team today. Keith Curl there of Manchester City. Steve McMahon in the background, who had some great years here as well. Chris Waddle. Great camaraderie in this business, isn't there? It's nice of these fellas to give up their afternoon. It is. I think, you know, they, they don't think about the money side because they don't get paid for these sort of games. You know, I, I think they think of the player they're doing it for. And if Steve Nicol wasn't uh, liked or uh, wasn't successful, these boys wouldn't be here, I can no. assure you. And he's a very likeable lad. Alan Wright there, the Blackburn Rovers defender. He's probably had a lift here today with his manager. It's an impressive turnout, isn't it? It is. You know, I only hope Steve McMahon knows it's a testimonial game. Because we... <laughs> well, I hope somebody's told him as well, because he's a battler, isn't he? Peter Reid. <laughs> he is. He would hate to get beat here at Anfield. That's something. Mark Bosnich, who qualifies for some reason in the Great Britain 11. Paul Davis there. John Walk. He'll get a big reception. One or two very successful seasons he had here, didn't he? Yeah. Very popular fella. You know, he's uh, done a great job for it in the last two years as well. Dwight York there, I think I caught a glimpse of. There he is. Nice and big Ron to lend him out today. Big Gary Gillespie in the background. Alan McAnally. What yeah. is he doing here? It's an opportunity. We don't often get this to spend as much time in the tunnel. Eavesdropping in this fashion. It's first out. I think we're about ready. Andy Gray isn't with us today, but he's sent part of the pre-match entertainment. The Scots band there. Everybody with a mascot, as you can see, and the last man out will be Steve Nichol, who we've all come to watch today. Yeah. Thoroughly deserved testimony, yes, yeah. yeah. there, there's the children, Ron, Michael and Katie. Look at those number four jerseys off, that's a nice touch, isn't it? My fella is in there too, and listen to this. To that side. Don't usually take this long to get down that tunnel, does it? Should be a fun afternoon. Should be some good football played as well. Here's Steve Nichol.
boys are, I was just looking there, his boys are replica of him. And he's got big feet as well. But it is a tremendous uh, reception he's got. We're at Anfield to watch Steve Nichols' testimonial match. Liverpool against a great Britain eleven in glorious sunshine. Dalgleish is back at Anfield. We've got live football coming next. Welcome back to our Super Sunday Extra from Anfield today in the sunshine. Liverpool against a Great Britain eleven. It's Steve Nichols' testimonial match. There's the man that we've come to see. Twelve years he spent at Anfield, during which time he's won the lot. It's a good crowd turned out as well. In excess of 15,000, I would say. The Anfield road end there, full. There isn't a spare seat to be seen. The new centenary stand on the far side. Kenny Dalglish is home, wearing seven, leading the Liverpool line. The Great Britain 11 managed today by Terry Venables, who's delighted to be involved. It's good to see him as well. Great Britain in a form of white and blue kit specially run up for the afternoon and somewhere out there is Jerry Marsden there he is and a day at Anfield wouldn't be complete without hearing the strains of you'll never walk alone and that I suspect is what we're about to get Liverpool's number one supporter And the cop choir. All right, let's go and join our match commentator today, and that is Ian Dark. Ian, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, Richard. What a lovely atmosphere there is at Anfield this afternoon for Steve Nichol. Let's have a look at the Liverpool side. It's got, uh, how can I put it, a rather experimental look about it. Who's that wearing the number seven shirt? King Kenny is back, age 42, for Liverpool. And number eight, Lee, that is Sammy Lee, making a return to the Liverpool lineup, the reserve team coach here. And Mo Johnston, having been given a free transfer across the park by Everton, suddenly finds himself wearing the number nine for Liverpool. Chance two to look at youngsters Scott Patterson there in the number two shirt, and Phil Sharnock wearing number six. As for the Great Britain side, it's filled with star names who 
down the years have played with and against Steve Nichol and have gained enormous respect for him. Chris Waddle, like Steve, a footballer of the year, there wearing the number 10 shirt. John Walk, uh, usually playing in midfield or defence for Ipswich these days, he's going to go back up front, I'm told, this afternoon. And a few names there like Bosnich and Alan Wright, who were wearing short trousers when Steve Nichol started with Air United. And it's all about this man. He looked pretty emotional to me, Phil Thompson, when they were singing You Never Walk Alone out there. Yeah, he's an absolute tremendous guy. Um, Liverpool through and through. Uh, the problem is there, with, there's not too many Stevie Nichols left at Liverpool. So the longer that I can keep playing, I think it's the good for the good of Liverpool Football Club. Marvellous character, one of the jokers in the pack at the club. Keith Hackett is the referee. A referee that all the players respect, and I like the outfit. It looks like he's about to referee a darts match, doesn't it? Uh, does he look like <laughs> Shepherd Wednesday, doesn't it? This model will be passing to him. Now, if it was Shepherd Wednesday, the colours would clash with something. So Liverpool then, of course, in the red and a first touch for Kenny Dalgleish. Good-looking crowd as well, and isn't it splendid, Phil, that uh, we've got great weather for Steve Nichols' testimony because it has upped the gate, reduced ticket prices today. He's going to make a fair bit of money out of well, it. Well, yeah, the, the lad deserves everything he's getting. It's an absolutely tremendous day. A couple of days ago, we had lightning. The rain was so heavy. The pitch is in immaculate condition. And I just hope everything's going to... I think we're going to have a good game to go with it. There's Dwight York getting his first touch and Torben Picknick, who's not been in favour at Liverpool in the Premier League this season. He's playing in central defence today. Today's hero, Steve Nicol, lining up in centre defence for Liverpool. He's played right back, central defence, left back, right midfield, centre midfield, left midfield. And he says he can't remember playing up front, but it might have happened at some time. Probably that Steve Nicol can play well in any position. Uh, usually these kind of uh, players they never get a sort of a long spell in teams they're usually a jack of all trade mastering on but he can say at least that he's been a master of every position he's played at here's Julian Dix now for Liverpool this is Phil Sharnock the number six gained a bit of European experience with Liverpool last season but uh, very much on the fringes of the first team normally a chance to have a look at him one of the uh, young stars coming through at Anfield is Mo Johnston. Strange to see him in the all-red of Liverpool. Stewart, who's forced his way into first-team reckoning in recent matches. And Sammy Lee. <laughs> it's great to see him back, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah. It, it, playing with Kenny out there. I think it's nice all these young lads are getting a nice bit of experience out there. Scott Patterson, Lee, uh, Sharnock, a few other lads who are on the subs bench. Young Dag Leash out there. It should all come for a good game. It's good to see Jerry Marsden as well. But where were the pacemakers? That's what I wanted to know. You could make a joke there, but I don't think it will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, a worm just tripped Sammy Leo. <laughs> he was getting quite keyed up about it, I think, Sammy, beforehand, you know. It's... Uh, he does his training. Now it's Kenny Dalgleish. Now Mo Johnston with the day's first effort. And easily fielded by Mark Bosnich. Here's Sharnock. And Alan Wright there, who is coming back from injury, the number three for the Great Britain eleven. Now, interestingly, he could be marking his manager today, <laughs> Kenny Dalgleish. Now, there's an interesting little confrontation. I think he'll be letting Kenny have the ball if he <laughs> just gets... Uh, he'll be trying to get back into the team very, very quickly. And then he will if he wants to get selected, won't he? And believe me, if Kenny Dalgleish is playing down there, that's his ball. And he'll want it every time. That's Waddle for Dwight York. <laughs> Glorious afternoon at Anfield. Now, Chris Waddle has been given a free roll to do exactly what he likes. And uh, young Patterson. I think it'll be a nice test for young Scott Patterson there, Ian. Uh, he's up against one hell of a good player. It'll be a nice little test for him on the, on the day. Um, whether he wins or whether not, it'll be a great experience for the lad. Waddle again. 
Might see a bit of the razzle-dazzle from him. It's away by Pete Nick. Dom Hutchison is dispossessed by Paul Davis of Arsenal. Now McMahon. Dwight York with some good work and a chance here and off the post for John Walk, who was nearly back on the score sheet at Anfield. That would have rolled back the years. It's a tremendous little move. That's a great ball. That's an absolute tremendous ball. Just like Walkie to be alive and alert. Everybody else seemed to knock off, think that Dwight York was going to shoot. Walkie, believe me, usually puts them in. Well, he scored 42 goals for Liverpool between 1983 and 1988 John Walk and probably uh, rather relishing the chance to have a go up front again he doesn't get many chances with Ipswich these days of course <laughs> Liverpool's corner this is Don Hutchison Sharnock Sammy Lee Sharnock who's got a sweet left foot so they tell me I haven't seen an awful lot of him play he hasn't had much first team experience with Liverpool a lovely ball to find Dwight York who set up that chance for John Walk a moment or two back Paul Davis of Arsenal now here's King Kenny and the crowd you could hear the little buzz of expectation when he got the ball couldn't you uh, for all what's been said about Kenny and people seem to think that he's not sorted too well like by Sim the vast majority of Liverpoolians love the man and as you say every time he gets the ball people are expecting that something special from him um, he said that that wasn't the best ball in the world that he's just given well he is 42 <laughs> I believe so I believe so <laughs> Doesn't look don't it. mention it he'll have a go at me later is Alan Wright of Blackburn Rovers and Steve Nicol cutting it out and getting a little cheer with his every touch. Steve Nick, Mo Johnston and Dalgleish. That was uh, unlike the master as well. Here's Richard Goff. Rangers back in form yesterday in Scotland with an away win. Paul Davis, who turned up, by the way, even for a testimonial, I noticed, in his very smart Arsenal jacket. The Arsenal players always very aware that they're representing the club on their travels. Steve Bruce, and here's Waddle off the outside of his foot. Oh, what a gorgeous ball that was to Dwight York. Really sublime, and York here. What a tremendous ball by Chris Waddle. No effort into it at all, just clipped it with the outside of his left foot. Absolute marvellous ball, straight into Dwight York's path. He'll, he'll love it out there today, it's, it's a lovely day. But that looks as though he's always in agony, as though he's always puffed out. But he'll relish it now, it's a nice atmosphere to play the game. And we could see some special things from him today. Here's Sharnock, looking to get past Keith Curl. This boy is, could be a tremendous prospect. I think he's had a bit of an injury last season. Uh, but you were saying before about a sweet left foot. There's not many better than him. If he can keep his head about him, he's got a great future in the game. I've seen him, he was with me in the reserves. Uh, tremendous left foot. I've seen him score some great goals. Here's Davis. Liverpool against a Great Britain 11 here and it's all in aid of that great Liverpool servant Steve Nicol and he's got a sunlit afternoon and a very healthy looking crowd Walk helps this one on towards Davis here's Scott Patterson the youngster my first chance to have a look at him Nick. Here's Steve Nicol. I wonder if he might just appear on the score sheet at the end of all this today. Be a nice touch, wouldn't it? Sharnock with a neat header to find Dalgleish. Stewart to Hutchison here. And out wide is Sammy Lee. He doesn't look an ounce heavier than in his playing days, or not much anyway. 
Dalgleish taking up that interesting position and in towards Mo Johnston. Patterson. And the turn by Hutchison. Great stuff. Nice patient build up. John's one of these fellas who's got a knack for a chance. It's a good ball in. Patterson's given the ball there. It may be a bit hard, people may think, but in professional football, he should control balls like that, which Hutchison did. And it was a good snapshot. Don Hutchison, who was out of the reckoning early in the season at uh, Liverpool. Of course, he had a few disciplinary problems during the summer, and he's uh, pledged his future to Scotland. It'll be interesting to see if he makes the breakthrough with them as an international player. Well, I think he's... Uh, it was a brave decision by him. Uh, especially with players now, sort of um, players now they've got a sort of Liverpool need all English players they can, and he's picked Scotland. Could be a very dodgy thing for the boy. Here's a man very much in Scotland, Richard Goff. He's declared himself available again for selection now that uh, Andy Roxburgh is no longer in the hot seat. Hot seat. Of course, Steve Nicholl was another who fell out with Mr. Roxburgh. He should have won more than his 27 caps. Here's Johnson and Dalgleish combining. <laughs> Always hard, I would imagine, for the pros to know just how to pitch it in these testimonial games. Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, I was talking to you before, Ian. I think games like this... You've got to try and up the tempo. I know it's sort of nice and easy. Also, you need a couple of players, which it was nice to see. Paul Stewart was getting a little bit stuck in. And I think you need that because it can be a long 90 minutes if everybody just sort of basks in the sunshine and just takes it easy. You do need people to set the pattern in the game because everybody wants to see goals. You don't want to see it, it being too easy. And I think we, we could need a goal just to set the, uh, the game alight. Great ball that from Julian Vix out to Sammy Lee. No Johnston. With this game appearing live on television, he may want to uh, attract a few scouts maybe. Another one on the substitutes bench and we may see later is Alan McAnally who's looking for a club I know, although Bayern Munich still hold his registration. May see uh, Alan McAnally coming on a bit later on. Here's Waddle looking to find walk but Nickel is there doing the covering Steve Nickel four league titles three FA Cups a European Cup a league Super Cup and a charity shield footballer of the year as well it's quite a list isn't it Phil Sharma for Liverpool here Stevie's been a great servant for the club Tremendous. I don't know whether you're going to see too many in the years to come players spending 12 years at football clubs. Um, but he's been a tremendous player. Joe's been good value. Always got those odd goals and everything what we were talking about before. Here's Goff to Keith Curl, the captain of Manchester City. Davis back to Steve Bruce. Two people suggesting that Steve Bruce might join Pallister in the uh, England team because those two have linked up so well now for a season or three for Manchester United that there are those who are saying, is it worth a try? Yeah, he's probably been one of the unluckiest players in the last couple of years not to play for England. There's been quite a few playing. Uh, the lad is a marvellous player. I think he does everything good for Manchester United to get the best out of Gary Pallister. Keeps him alive, because Gary is prone to making sort of slack uh, and sort of bad errors. But I think uh, Steve Bruce is always there alongside him to give him good encouragement, which is necessary, really. It's got to happen quite quick, quick for Steve Bruce, because he is the wrong side of 30 now, of course. Here's uh, Dalgleish, but Waddle getting there before him. And again, it's a gorgeous ball for Dwight York. And here's a real chance here for the British side. York again loses his footing. Not for the first time. But that looks quite a potent little combination, Waddle and York. Dwight York not getting too much of a look in at Aston Villa this season. Here he is again. I think if York stays alive. Here's Alan Wright. Again, they're queuing up. Up goes John Walk on the back post. 
think if he stays alive uh, uh, Dwight York today he could get quite a few chances with the likes of Chris Waddle in the mood that he is playing in that centre midfield slot I think he could create quite a few chances for him it'd be quite interesting as players go on get a little bit older playing those central midfield positions as Doug Lee did John Walk not able to reach that there's a bit of pushing going on there Ray Kennedy moved back into midfield they always seem to make a nice uh, slot for themselves in there and with Waddle's vision he could end up as a centre midfield player as long as he's got some decent lads around who can do his running. That's nice football by the Liverpool side. Stewart, and that isn't so nice. He's not as quick these days, little Sammy, is he? Well, he'd have needed to be in the 236 at Walthamstow to have got that one, wouldn't he? Steve McMahon and uh, Keith Curl playing in the unfamiliar right back position though he has filled that role for England of course did at the European Championships against uh, Denmark I think it was Liverpool nil the Great Britain 11 nil here at the Sun Bath Anfield Steve Nicholl to Charnock and now Julian Dix I think he picked the wrong pass there, Julian Dix. I think he's trying to set uh, Phil Charnock away there. And he's probably against one of the quickest players in the game. I think Keith Curl. Well, since it's one of those afternoons where we are going to say lots of nice things about people all afternoon, Julian Dix so far has uh, had a blemish-free time since he joined Liverpool. Yeah, I think you've... Um, I think everybody's sort of been too overcritical about uh, Neil Ruddock and uh, Julian Dix. We all know about his reputation and everything, but he's coming here and he's, he's going to wipe the slate clean. So you've got to give the lad a fair crack of the whip. Let's, you know, let's give sort of 12 months at least and see the lad, see if he's what his character's like. But the boy can't play. It is a chance for a new beginning for him, that's for certain. At Anfield. Now here's Mo Johnston, another player who's looking for a new beginning, having been given a free transfer by Everton. That's Scott Patterson with the uh, long-range effort, looking to cover himself in glory. Well, yeah, Scott was another one who's playing the reserves for me. Um, he just come into the team, great potential, big lad, can play in a number of positions, and uh, apparently he's been playing really well in the reserve team this season. Got, got a bit of a job to get Rob Jones out of the way, though. Well, yeah, and Rob's going to be there for a few years to come. He might have to use that one playing in a few different positions. He plays central defence as well. He can play central defence. Play midfield. He came as a midfield player, to be honest. He's a good player in the Don Hutchinson mould. I think this game needs a goal at the moment, for the fans' sake. Let's see if we can get one here. Chris Waddle, who looks more capable than most of providing one. And Dwight York... John Walk did hit the post for the Great Britain 11. Here is Paul Davis now. That nice left foot of his. And Reed, oh, that's, well, it looked better than it actually turned out. Just drifting it off the outside of the boot. They're all uh, trying these little things, the improvisation this afternoon. It's a chance to do it, of course. It is, yeah. As I said, we just don't want it to get too flat, the game. Because uh, the public have paid quite a lot of money. The other day, it's a testimonial game, but gives people the opportunity to try these things outside of the foot, inside of the foot in a nice relaxed atmosphere we had all sorts of entertainment before we went live here this afternoon with uh, fake bands and gladiators and the like we had uh, Jerry Marsden who you saw who I must say was a considerable improvement on Nigel Kennedy at Old Trafford last night well to, to be perfectly honest, I don't know Nigel Kennedy, but I thought that was an absolute disgrace. Uh, I don't mind saying uh, I was quite embarrassed. People should be. We played a national anthem. It should be done in the right way and with a lot of respect. And I don't think there was any need for something like that. Now then, Dwight York is away here. And the flag is up. The flag is up. Rather belatedly, it went up.
Sammy Lee. Stewart Charnock here with the determined looking run that's a good looking ball as well almost for Mo Johnston still might be something Sammy Lee Scott Patterson the gangling pullback Peter Reid now of Southampton of course sounds a bit strange that getting the foot in It'll be a good signing for Southampton. It'll be a good signing for them. Well, apparently they should have won on his debut against Sheffield United when they were three went up and it ended up 3-3. Good comeback by Sheffield United, though. Steve Bruce there reading it well, setting Waddle away. Played the one-two of themselves. <laughs> that was a superb piece of play by Waddle. He was so alive there to everything. Carried on running, takes on Pete Nick, who gets in the tackle. I think it's, it's a marvellous thing for Steve Nichols today. Some of these great players who came, like to Richard Goff from all the way down from Scotland, Paul Davis from Arsenal, are absolutely tremendous, great names. Well, it's a tribute to him, isn't it, when they could have just put their feet up for the weekend. Let's just watch this move develop. Reed, Davis here. Now, Chris Waddle. Good looking cross, aimed towards York. And James gets it at the second attempt. David James, who, of course, is being kept out of the Liverpool side with Bruce Grobelar ever present this year. Bruce, who's away playing for Zimbabwe in the World Cup today. I think we might have a substitution quite shortly. Alan McAnally, who I was mentioning earlier, may be uh, introduced into the action. Bruce back to York, and here's McMahon. Peter Reid, 37 years of age now, but still able to do a very smart job in midfield at the top level. Goff and Keith Curl, one of the paciest defenders around, couldn't quite reach that one. Now here's Alan McAnally. And uh, Dwight York it is, who's coming off the field. I don't think he's got any kind of knock. I hope he hasn't. I don't think Ron Atkins would be too pleased if he has, but he looks all right. So maybe they're just going to try something a bit different. And uh, Alan McAnally will certainly relish the run out because he is looking for a club at the moment in either England or Scotland. He's keeping himself pretty fit, but of course he's had horrendous injury problems. As we're saying, it's, there's young lads out there trying to sort of play well, trying to show themselves. So, like, there's a few players out there, as you're saying, Dwight York's just gone off, trying to prove something. Yeah, it might be something here. Chrissy Waddle. And he made a bit of a present of it to Picnic. Charlotte um, dispossessed by McMahon. Walks in the middle as well. Cross not accurate enough. Of the experience of McMahon, knowing that he was under pressure, 10 yards outside his own box, closing on a young lad, putting him under pressure and getting the ball himself. McAnally, good little layoff, his first touch for Keith Curl. Walks come to the near post, McAnally's on the far post and Peter Reid's in here and Stewart gets there with the interception. Paul Stewart, who it was rumoured would be on his way from Anfield during the summer. That's a tremendous ball. He knows Alan McAnally's coming on. Knows what his force is in the air. And there he goes. Nice first touch for him. Reed's corner and the header coming in from Richard Goff is easy enough for James. Here's Del Gleish. Still with a fair little turn of pace. 
And another player who's been around a bit, Steve McMahon, making sure there's no glory this time. Well, the round of golf next week's going to be interesting with those two. <laughs> from taking the ball off Kenny. Oh, he showed a clean uh, pair of heels to McMahon there, didn't he? Well, Kenny's got this dour image to the outside world, but really he's got a very dry Glaswegian win, hasn't he? I tell you, he's one of the funniest people of that. People don't realise he go on about his face. I know he comes across on the television as being dour, but he likes to crack with the lads. Believe me, there's nothing better, and that's what's kept him going all these years. That's why he was such a favourite with the players. I don't mean just on the field, but off the field as well. Good to hear. I think he's played a few jokes on Steve Nichol in his time, hasn't he? <laughs> just a few. <laughs> he's been the butt of many. Here is Steve Nichol. There's one of the stories in the programme about Steve Nichol wearing a T-shirt through a snowy journey and was forced to get out the car, clean the windscreen, and Kenny Dalglish drove off, leaving him in the snow. Yeah, I went out of hands that, wasn't it? <laughs> and here's Pete Nick, and into the stand. That gives us a chance to bring Nick Collins in with some news. Ian, just to let you know that uh, Dwight Walk, Walk, York apparently has been suffering from a thigh strain. Uh, he felt it starting to go and he came off with a precaution. And here is Walk. He might get another chance here. And eventually, between them, James and then Steve Nichol concede the corner. It wasn't Dwight Walk, it was John Walk, by the way. <laughs> Right, walk, walk Here's Keith Girl with the corner kick for uh, the Great Britain 11 in their snazzy red, white, and blue. Keith Curl's found a way past Charlotte there. Out to McMahon. And that took a deflection off the day's star man, Steve Nichol. You like nothing better than to, do, to, to score today, Macke. Playing any type of ball around the edge of the box, he's going to have a, he's going to have a lash at it today. Peter Reid in the in-swinging corner. Nodded on by Walk, out to McMahon again, and just as Phil Thompson was telling you, he sees the whites of the goalpost, he's going to have a go. Little Alan right there, he, what a prospect he's going to be. People are looking for sort of people that are saying about Stuart Pearce, his age and how he is at the game. This little fella could be, him and Rob Jones on the other side could be there for many years to come. This fella's a tremendous prospect. He's had a lot of injury problems, Phil. He's, yeah. he's had two hernia operations, I think, in the last uh, year, Alan Wright. And of course, you know, he's got Graham Lasso to displace from that Blackburn side when well, he gets fit again. I've seen this boy play and this boy's one of the best left backs I've seen. He's got so much going for him. He only looks a little boy, but he can't half leap. There's another uh, lad who's come through from Blackpool. That's a very good ball from Steve Bruce. Here for Waddle. And here's Alan McAnally. He's disappointed about that. Testimonial or not, Alan McAnally. He wanted the goal there. It's a great setup, this. Great setup. Waddle knows the position of them. Probably his touch might have been a little bit better. As you say, he's disappointed. He's really disappointed in it because he's one out there. He's probably not scored for a little while in any sort of a game. So he'll be looking to get on the score sheet now. It may be a bit of a stroll in the sunshine for some of the established pros, but for the youngsters and players like Macanelli, it's quite an important little showcase for them. Without a doubt. Chris Waddle's shown some absolutely magnificent touches out there. He's got so much ability. He is poor this fella's not too bad either. <laughs> yes, it's been good to see him back established in the Arsenal first team after a long time in the wilderness the last uh, few months, Paul Davis. as well for Arsenal's two Wembley Cup wins last year. Here's McMahon. Now 
back in LA. And here is Davis. And James quickly off his line. The goalkeepers aren't want to uh, give away anything. They've got their pride to consider. They want a clean sheet. Well, again, as we're saying there about uh, both players trying to show themselves well. He's another boy who's be happy to be playing out here again today. And he'll be wanting to keep a clean sheet. And rumours, of course, that David James might be uh, on the move. A month or two back, they were talking about Tim Flowers coming here from Southampton and uh, James going. Didn't happen. Flowers seems to be linked with all the top clubs just at the moment, notably Blackburn. I think once you get on happy players, mind you, every player who's sort of unhappy or is, is up for grabs, Liverpool seem to be looking at or going to get one minute Liverpool aren't. It's another glorious ball from Waddle for McAnally. There's Keith Curl, ex of the crazy gang, of course. Waddle was enjoying himself out there. Davis and Alan Wright, who was getting the rave reviews from Phil Thompson a moment or two back. Now, Ismo Johnson and Dalgleish. Listen to the crowd every time he gets the ball. He's Isn't it himself. nice to hear that name again, though? And Dalgleish. It is, isn't it? There's not been too many like him. Oh, that's a good ball from McMahon for War. McAnally's on the far post. Reed's seen him. Too long. Now, Dalgleish. Ah, that's now. I was about to say that was more like the old Dalgleish, but not quite. He's... Hey, that was like the old Dalgleish. Believe me. <laughs> what a record he's got! Eight titles, four League Cups, three European Cups, one Super Cup, and two FA Cups as player and manager in his time at Liverpool. That's not to mention the 10 trophies he had at Celtic. That's Here he is one behind me, that, by the way. <laughs> so the rest of the time, he, he didn't do much. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there'd be some roar if he scored here today. Del Gleish. Scott Patterson. Corbin Peaknik. Away by Goff. We still await the first goal here. Sharnock into Julian Dix. In towards Mo Johnson. He's beaten in the air by Bruce. Comes out to Don Hutchison. He thought about the shot on the left foot. Wouldn't quite drop for him. McAnally. Oh, what a good ball. Almost for Waddle. It just went on a yard or two too far. But uh, the idea was good and so was the vision McAnally swaps the joke with uh, Terry Venables on the bench about it another man making a comeback of sorts today Mr Venables well, it's nice to see him back down there he's, he's had more problems than many hasn't he um, he's done well to turn up here today I think it's magnificent to the man well whatever's again, happened the spotlight's still on, still on him He's come here and face uh, such a big crowd. I think it's very nice of him. I think he's enjoying it. He seemed very relaxed downstairs beforehand. That's Waddle again here for Davis. He's one on one. Is this the first goal? And Davis has put it in. Paul Davis. <laughs> I don't think he meant that too much, did he? I think he was trying to drag it round him. He's just come off his toe and rolled in the bottom corner. And if it hadn't gone in, I think Alan McAnally might have had something to say about it. Well, he's in support on the other side here, number 12. Let's we watch this. Oh. Here it is again, Phil. He just goes to drag it round in there. It takes a little bubble, actually. But he'd be pleased to see that one in the back of the net. I think that's what we needed, though, in this game. Because in fairness, everybody wants to see the goals, whether it be testimonial or not. Liverpool nil, the Great Britain 11 won, and Paul Davis of Arsenal gets that first goal. It did look as if it might have been a little by accident, almost. I think Liverpool just needs to get one or two running from midfield um, to try and get beyond Mo Johnson and 
Sammy Lee seems to be holding a position wide and uh, Phil Charnock is Julian Dix. I think some, somebody's got to start running forward just to get beyond, beyond uh, Kenny Dalglish and Mo Johnson. Let's have a look at some programmes coming up on Sky Sports. Super Sunday next week is Ipswich against the currently rampant Leeds United who are up in third place. That'll be interesting. Leeds are on the march a bit. And the following Monday, Kenny Dalglish's Blackburn Rovers are at home to Sheffield United. Alan Shearer, of course, in action for Blackburn Rovers at Ewood Park. It's Monday Night Football. Here it's Liverpool nil, Great Britain won in the testimonial match for that great Liverpool seven. Steve Nicolou has the ball here. I think to be fair, if anybody's watched the game, you must be wondering why Don Hutchinson's got his socks down. Can't understand it, the boy, I hope he's got his pads on. It's, it's, it looks so scruffy. He's not doing himself any favours, I know done very well, and the lad should have his socks up at, at least. Not only just to make it look nice, but protect him from scat scratches, any sort of abrasions on his legs. Well, accidents do happen. Exactly. And the lad's been a bit silly out there. Not he had them down and then he had them up. I hope somebody's told him. Julian Dix has got uh, his left sock anyway. It doesn't look down. nice. Of course, it's only helping them as well if we've got the shots up. Here's McMahon. Nearly all the threat so far has come from the Great Britain side. Curl will keep this in. Walk is in the middle. McAnally is in the middle. Not the best of crosses. Paul Stewart. Here is Sammy Lee. Winner of two European Cup medals with Liverpool. Mo Johnson. John Hutchison. Half of these Liverpool boys, because they're strangers in many ways. They're saying the old song. Must be a bit awe-inspiring in a way for somebody like Don Hutchison just looking out there and Julian Dix to be playing in the same side as Kenny Dalglish. Well, if you think about it, it was Kenny Dalglish who who took Don Hutchinson from Hartlepool. So it'd be exceptionally nice for that boy to be playing there. Now the great ball from Waddle. McMahon is there. And he went for the chip. And uh, I can remember in his Liverpool days seeing him score a couple like that. He'd have put them in. He'd have, he'd have bent that with his left foot to come in from the far side. Waddle is putting on a bit of a masterclass out there. He's given a great show. He's playing some great balls out there. It's a pleasure to be watching. He's nearly playing as well as I did in that celebrity game before. I'm, I'm not that good. That's Peter Reid off the outside of the boot. And Waddle there. Spotting James just a yard or so forward from his line. Thought he might try to chip him. And it was about the first thing that Chris Waddle has done wrong. But he... He'd seen him, it was a long way out. A tremendous effort. Here's Sammy Lee. Kenny Dalglish. We could be talking a decade or so ago, couldn't we? And Phil Thompson sitting beside me in the commentary <laughs> box as well. <laughs> This is an afternoon for memories and nostalgia for many of the Liverpool fans and a lot of them, whole families I noticed, turning up in the car parks beforehand and talking and buzzing about, isn't it great, we're going to see Kenny Dalglish wearing the number seven shirt for Liverpool again. Here he is. And some of the kids have probably never ever seen Kenny play, they have only probably seen him on the video, but they've probably heard so much about him and the dads will be bringing him because I see it was lovely to see. Great day, so many kids knocking about him to say, well, I, I did see him play on Anfield. Here's Davis, the scorer of the only goal so far. Peter Reid. Stuart 
cuts this one out. Now Julian Dix tries to pick up Charlotte's run and does so. Mark Bosnich in the goal for the Great Britain side has had a pretty easy ride so far. And the strange thing about Mark Bosnich, he could have been playing for Liverpool today. Uh, not too many people know this, but uh, Mark was, came to Liverpool when I was uh, the reserve team coach. He came at the age of about 15 from Australia. And what a prospect he looked. He was shouting, organising. Well, I knew What that, a goalkeeper he looked. Uh, we just couldn't get a like a work permit for him or something. But I think Manchester United got somebody to sponsor him, or and he came over. And next thing we knew, he was he was on their books as a YTS boy. But he was one of the best things that I'd ever seen. Oh, he was organising, shouting, screaming at people when he was at 15. What a prospect! Boys, really gone. As they say, not a lot of people know that. Mm -hmm. I think they know about the Manchester United bit, but certainly not the Liverpool bit. He could have been an Anfield goalkeeper, Mark Bosnich. Curl, McMahon. Cut out by Picnic and Nickel. Very aware of what's going on around him as always. Here's McMahon again. Davis, all oh, his walk. And David James very quickly out. Kenny and Mo there just having a word with one another in the native Glaswegian. <laughs> you can do the translations, not me. You we man, you we man, Alva, you we man. Here's Carl. Waddle again. Reed favours the outside of that right boot quite often, I've noticed this afternoon. Somebody's boots come off. I think it might be Chris Waddle's. Yes, he's playing with just one boot at the moment. Keith Hackett throws it over to him. Steve Bruce picking up Alan Wright's run, that's nice. McAnally's in the middle, too long for him. Stewart under pressure from Paul Davis. Paul Davis has shown a great attitude. Um, he's not gone round sort of chasing, kicking people, but he's closed people down when he's got it. He's played, the, picked the right pass at the right time. Especially the one sort of slotting little balls through for people. But he's enjoying it out there. He's, he's not just out, out there for the stroll. He's worked very hard. Sensibly today, the uh, prices for admission were put down so that Steve Nichol could attract as many fans as possible. £10 for a stand ticket, usually £14. £5 to go on the cop, and it's usually 7 And the family stand was just £6. So it's pretty good value with a lot of big names in action. And, of course, Liverpool, an absolute hotbed for football, and they've turned up in their thousands to support one of Liverpool's great servants. Just because people could have took the easy way out and watched it on Sky. They've come out in the thousands, and have really enjoyed it. He's Steve McMahon. He looks up to see who's available, answer nobody, and he rattles the side netting. Steve McMahon strikes me, Phil, as the kind of player who doesn't really know how to play a game, anything less than 100%. No, he's like that, Macca. He's having a little clash, as we've seen out there with uh, Paul Stewart. He's having a right go, and as I said before, he's going to be looked to get on that score sheet. There was no way he was going to try and pull this back. There wasn't too much help with him. Leash. Sammy Lee. Here's Dalgleish again. Now Alan Wright, one of Kenny Dalgleish's players at Blackburn Rovers. Reed and Davis. Bags of skill, Davis. Lends some imagination to Arsenal's midfield play. Oh, Stewart caught a bit late there by McMahon. That could be an interesting contest. I think the 
two of them have had a little snarl at one another. No love lost between a pair of them. Here's another one, Steve Bruce, who's having an excellent game at the back. Not doing anything flash, not trying to get involved. He knows he's got important things for his club. He's doing things right so that he, he's not going to get hurt. Now, here's Steve Nichol. Right cuts it out. It should be very interesting because I think Alan Hansen might be coming out for a bit of a knockabout. I know he's played in the game beforehand with us. It's uh, been quite interesting. Waddle with a cross. Great ball into the danger area and nobody attacking it. already seen Chris Waddle on the sky this year playing for Sheffield Wednesday at Newcastle and he made a goal now then Mo Johnson Don Hutchison oh saved by Bosnich here's Dalglish and that is the last action of the first half it ended with Kenny Dalglish having his first shot of the day but Paul Davis with the only goal so far Half time here is Liverpool nil, Great Britain won, more fun and entertainment to come, and Ron Yates chatting away with Richard Keyes at half time. Don't go away, we'll be back at Enfield in just a moment. Welcome back to our Super Sunday Extra from Anfield today. Steve Nichols' testimonial, Liverpool against a Great Britain eleven. Nobody's pretending it's for real, but uh, it's very good fun and good entertainment as well. Our guest is Ron Yates, former Colossus here at Anfield, who's the chief scout these days. Uh, one or two exceptions, I suppose, Ron, to what I just said. Steve McMahon's playing it for real, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks as though uh, Paul Stewart is as well. Uh, one or two are playing at leisurely pace and it's suiting Chris Waddle. And one or two wanting to play. Kenny's bumping those legs at different times and, and desperate for something, isn't he? Probably? Yeah, he's always desperate to score a goal here. And, you know, I, I know that for a fact. He, he loves scoring goals, Kenny. And he won't like it going into that Anfield dressing room one nil down. And what an exhibition from Chris Waddle, who's also really enjoying himself. The things this fella can do, Ron, takes your breath away. Well, as I said, it, it is played at a leisurely pace and without tackling, when I say without tackling, without serious tackling, and he runs the show. Steve and Nichols said beforehand, you, you know what he's going to do. You try to stop him doing it, but he still somehow finds a way to do it. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm only glad that I'm not out on that pitch now because, you know, playing in a, a match like this where, you know, you, you're not allowed to tackle more or less because of injury, uh, injuring another player. You know, you would have got. I would have been frustrated. I'd have gone up and kicked him. <laughs> I, I really would, you know. But it is nice to see. You know, everybody seems to be enjoying it. Uh, I think you're going to get a few more goals in the second half. Well, only one so far, scored by Paul Davis of Arsenal, and uh, here it comes. Now there was some suggestion in the commentary box he didn't mean this but what a good ball from Waddle and from here on in he's favoured isn't he? Terrific ball you know and, and I thought Al McAnally is running to his side I thought he was going to pass it to him so did he McAnally. went to go past the keeper and instead the ball runs into the net you know I think they say in the trade don't they a good batting is yes. that not the correct yes that's what they say no matter how they go in it's still a good bad one <laughs> 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 even if you put it in with your nose it's still a good goal. I can imagine what McAnally was saying, running square in here. There he goes. Yeah, I think he'd made about 100 yards dash to get to there. It's a while since he's moved as far and as quickly. Yeah, yeah. But he, he looks fit. You know, uh, we've been reading papers saying that he's not fit. He's had a few games here, there, everywhere. But on that show, you know, he looks as though he's got his pace back. He's a strong, big boy, you know. I tell you, somebody else who's done well, just sitting on that far side there, hasn't put a pound on, Sammy Lee. It's nice to see him involved again, isn't it? Little Sammy, yeah, of course. Uh, I, I love little Sammy. He's a, he's a lovely little lad. Uh, good player. Good player and enthusiastic. God, you know, he'll hate it as well. He'll be going in there shouting and bawling and what they should have done and what he should have done. Just a word about Dalgleish. Where would you rate him? You've seen most of them at Anfield since, what, 1961, as you said. Where, where yeah. would you rate him amongst Liverpool's greats? Well, I would rate him uh, one of the best, one of the best. You know, I, I didn't play alongside Kenny. I used to come as, as a spectator in them days and watch, you know, and I'd just come to watch him because he was great to watch. And 
and, and I appreciate it because I would have hated to play against him because you didn't know what he was going to do next. And, and he runs high in, in the top uh, of my brackets. Well, he'll be looking to score in the second half, so will one or two more. As some of the legs get tired, there'll be opportunities. And we'll be back with the whole of the second half live on our Super Sunday Extra in a moment or so. We're live at Anfield with Steve Nichols' testimonial match. Don't you dare go away. It's a gorgeous, sunny, summery afternoon at the seaside. Could be anywhere. We are, in fact, in Liverpool. That's New Brighton. We're across on the other side of the Mersey. Anfield is our venue for live football on a Super Sunday Extra. Steve Nichols' testimonial match. Liverpool against a Great Britain eleven, who lead at half-time by a goal to nil. But now we expect more, plenty more. Great Britain today managed by Terry Venables, so it's great to see you back at a footballing venue, and he's with Nick Collins. Well, Terry, uh, what words of wisdom uh, did you tell the team at half-time? Well, I never say too much at half-time because it's 45 minutes to go and uh, very good display first half. The boys played, you know, moved it around very, very quickly. But um, I prefer to say something after the game, not half-time. There's still another bit of time left. Seemed to be shouting a few instructions as the half came to an end, though. Well, just um, I was just getting warmed up as the <laughs> half-time came. It put me off. <laughs> All right, Terry, enjoy the second half. Thank yeah, you. you too, yeah. And we've got the players back, but there's still plenty of entertainment around the stadium. A band, notably, at the moment. The Dublin Rogues, who are the official band of the Republic of Ireland's World Cup squad. And there they are, and whilst they're on the pitch, there isn't going to be too much football. But everybody else, as you saw, is just about ready. Keith Hackett, our referee, is out there. But these boys are digging in, Ron. Nobody's going to spoil their big day, are they? <laughs> Not at all, they're going to wait till they finish this song. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not a 12-inch play. Well, they took 10 minutes to set up their instruments, so I hope they don't take 10 minutes to get them off the pitch. <laughs> I think Keith Hackett down there is conducting, isn't he? Or has he got a watch on them? There he is. Well, he enjoyed it. They took five minutes or so to set up. I suspect they'll take less now to leave us. But well done, very enjoyable. Hey, no problem. Well done. How you doing? There's another familiar Liverpool face from the past, Gary Gillespie. And he'll enjoy his return to Anfield as well. Reluctantly left, I think it's fair to say, Ron, didn't he? I think so, yes, definitely. You know, and with all the troubles going on at Celtic, he'd be glad to come down here and, and play in peace and quiet. Have a rest. Yeah, that's right. I don't think he played yesterday. I think he was substitute. Eric Nixon, the Tramway Rovers goalkeeper, they enjoyed a good win yesterday over Bolton to go top of Division 1. Will we see them in the Premiership next season? There's still a bit of work to do as they de-rig this band. Some aging limbs on that park run. Let's hope they don't get too cold, eh? <laughs> it's a good job Phil Thompson's not out there now. It's nice to see Phil back in a pair of boots. It was, it? yes, yes. I bet he enjoyed every minute of that out there. And Alan Hansen. He looked as though he was enjoying himself. Right, well, let's go and rejoin our match commentators then. Phil Thompson, former England skipper. We've had some wonderful years here at Anfield. And Ian Dog. Thanks a lot, Richard. I think uh, the Dublin Rogues were planning to go on to tomorrow's Sunrise programme on breakfast television on Sky TV until their uh, two-day concert was quickly abrupted there by Keith Hackett. Uh, some bizarre scenes, but I guess it's all part of the entertainment here. Great Britain 11 leading 1-0 against Liverpool, who now have Gary Gillespie back in their central defence. The Celtic player in the all red of Liverpool again today. And again, that is good to see. The Great Britain side have Tranmere Rovers' Mark Hughes also playing, not to be confused by or with Manchester United's Mark Hughes, who of course is with the Welsh squad at the moment. Here's John Ward and Peter Reid. I think he must have given Stevie Nichols some oxygen at half time. They pushed him <laughs> forward into midfield. See what he can do there. Maybe hopefully him grab a goal. 
as he's pushed in there while Gary, Gary Gillespie's gone uh, alongside Tobin Pigney. Well, maybe he's going to try and play every position he ever played for Liverpool in the course of 90 minutes. So he's got to go right midfield, left midfield, and right and left back yet. There is Nickel looking for the one-two with Mo Johnson. And Waddle, who's been very much the star of the show so far, spraying another pass to Walk, who is onside here. McAnally is in the middle. He's gone to the far post. Does it get through to him? It doesn't. David James making the save. Phil Thompson, by the way, was joking at halftime about those two blokes on the stilts. He's saying he's glad he didn't have to mark them ever. <laughs> oh, they were two big lads, weren't they? And he was going to put a few of the gladiators against them, I think. I thought Mark Hately might have been one of them. Here's Dalgleish. Stewart. This is Scott Patterson, the youngster in the number two shirt. Nickel. It's Keith Hackett. There's gratitude for you. Interesting now, he's moving quite quickly, Alan McAnally. So he's looking to sort of uh, show a few managers that he can still play, and just things like that showing his pace. It's sort of heartening for him. Well, I was speaking to Alan McAnally beforehand, and he would like it to be known that he is generally available. That doesn't sound too much like an well, advert. It seemed at one time, didn't it, as though he was going to be signing for Everton. He was going to have a spell there, but he didn't do. Kenny Delgleish got a whack there from Steve Bruce, accidental, I hasten to add. <laughs> well, I think the boo was actually a piece of reed. He got a nice cop welcome for a nice Evertonian. Used to be a Liverpool fan as a boy, though, Peter Reid. It's the way it happens with a lot of people these days. Young Robbie Fowler, who just came through. Big Evertonian. Dalgleish with an astute little ball, aimed towards Mo Johnston. John Walk. McAnally laid off, but only for Sammy Lee, who still looks pretty sprightly, I must say. Almost for Don Hutchison, but uh, Richard Goff is reading that very well indeed. Richard Goff probably is the best central defender in the country, in the uh, in Britain. Absolutely tremendous player, always likely to score a goal at set pieces. I've always admired him greatly. Richard Goff of Glasgow Rangers. I wonder whether Craig Brown will have him back for Scotland. He is available, but uh, as they were saying north of the border, don't hold your breath after, <laughs> after all the disagreements there have been. Well, that was a sad thing that was happening with, uh, with Scotland. They seem to be having that disagreements with management and players. It's what you can do without, basically. Goff there was climbing on Don Hutchison. And so Liverpool have a free kick. My no. ball, it's my ball. Can you see him saying it? It's my ball, I'm going to take this. Go on, have a shot, Danny. And chance of Dalgleish. Dalgleish ring around Anfield. Oh, it's chipped up, and Eric Nixon, the Premier Rovers goalkeeper, clutches it. It's taken over from Mark Bosnich of Aston Villa for the second half. Waddle, who's thoroughly enjoyed himself. There was no suggestion he'd go off. And Gary Gillespie playing without a number. Makes a change, doesn't it? Because usually now the backs of the players are plastered with names and numbers. Yeah, and probably make, what else. they'll probably make Richard Keyes happy. <laughs> He's always moaning about these, all these numbers. So he'd be happy there's only 1-2-11 uh, to today. He doesn't have to commentate on the game, so <laughs> Phil. <laughs> the funny thing is, the only people with names on their back today are the referee and linesman. I think they're trying out these uh, new shirts as well, aren't they? They from your ship shirts, no? Or just for the day? It wouldn't work too well in a Newcastle or Sheffield Wednesday game, would they? Now here's Julian Dix.
think there's only 10 players on the field for Great Britain at the moment. I dare say they'll produce another one in a moment. Paul Davis, the scorer of the only goal so far, looking to take on Gillespie. Another old Anfield favourite, and there are lots and lots of them on the roll of honour who have been uh, wheeled out this afternoon. Now, Terry Venables has just realised he's only got 10 players. He said he was rusty. Surely not that rusty. <laughs> Dare I say, they'll buy one from somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, T. So I think they might be uh, going to bring on Dominic Matteo, who is a Liverpool youngster who was due to appear for Liverpool. You can see he's got Liverpool socks on. They've got a white shirt on. Yeah, he's got the Liverpool socks, you can see there. Now, I think he's going to play for Great Britain to make up the numbers. Ah, you can't believe it, really, can you? Hughes with the cross, the Tranmere player. With the famous name, Mark Hughes. And Matteo comes on. Now, do you know him as well, Phil? He's another one, basically, you could say, my lads. A great potential with him as well. A lad who can run like the wind. A bit naive sometimes in possession. Looks a bit gangly, but when he's in, in full flow, the lad can play. It'd be it's tremendous for him to be playing with some of those players down there. You Chris Waddle, Paul Davis, Peter Reid, Richard Goff, Steve Bruce. He's just to go out there and enjoy that. Nice, nice experience for them. It'd be nice if Graham Sunes could have been here to see them play. There's uh, Julian Dix, who's looking to clean up his act, and will be glad when he starts to make headlines for what he does with the ball, rather than what he does in the referee's notebook. Now Waddle here. Has got acres and acres of space. Here's John Walk and off the post. Walkie, great striker to the ball. Just watch this. It's great for anybody watching to get your body over the ball. Boom, there you go. He's just picked his spot. Well, John Walk has been close a couple of times for marking his return to Anfield with a goal. Sammy Lee. Down the line for Patterson, who's now out of position as Reed picks it up for the Great Britain side. Paul Davis. Now Waddle. And here's Macadale. This is Matteo. Ooh, not a bad effort from the youngster. Oh, he likes it as well. He likes it as well. It's a great ball. I don't know whether Chris is trying to find... Dominic or no or Alan McAnally but he strikes this wonderfully not a bad effort that would have been one to tell the family about when he got home wouldn't it now then here's Steve Nichol who's in a more forward position Dalglish here is he going to score Steve Bruce gets his body in between like the good defender he is and Kenny still got it lays it off Hutchison fires it over, but wasn't that typical Dalgleish, the whole thing, so good with his back to goal. You could feel it, the anticipation in the crowd, they were desperate to... That was Kenny at his best, back to goal, always looking for it. There he goes, good control, looks to go past him first of all. Steve Bruce defends really well. There it is, good control, you don't lose it, like riding a bike. Still a lot of strength there in the old man. Yeah, it hasn't all gone, has it? Not by a long chalk. The crowd are absolutely loving just seeing him again in that number seven shirt. I think he could stand there like a statue and they'd love it. But he's doing rather more than that. He's beginning to be a bit more of an influence. It's almost as if the, the rust has been shaken up a little as the game's gone on. Steve Bruce getting booed while Manchester United players are never that popular at Anfield. No, that, okay, another way the crowd are, but they should be, he shouldn't even be trying to do something like that. That lad's came, and he's came to play for Stevie Nichols. 
And he deserves a bit more than that. Here's Here we go again. again. There we go, strength. And Mo Johnston's shot is blocked. And that's good work by Jan Matteo again. It's as if somebody said, get the ball into Kenny's feet. Get the ball into him and let him do the rest. It's too far out for him these days. Coming outside the box, in the box, get it into his feet. Make it stick. Well, he's got 168 goals for Liverpool. We wouldn't mind just seeing one more, would we? No. I think besides Stevie Nichols scoring a goal, I think the next one would be Kenny Dagley scoring. This is Matteo. Well, I didn't teach him any of that, Ian. I didn't <laughs> teach him anything. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you, Phil. <laughs> You were a much better crosser than that, weren't you? <laughs> I never got that far up the pitch. <laughs> I got a nose, please. And then the pitch, the game was called off, then waterlogged. <laughs> now, it's Stuart. And the flag has gone up. It isn't going to count. That is not an equaliser. The man in the gaudy outfit with the flag says no. Here we go. I think it's touch and go. Yeah, he's just off. He's just off. But he does well to keep it down. But I think that's what Liverpool need is a bit more of the, the midfield that's breaking. You feel it a bit more action again. The fit, they're going into the cop goal. Seems to be a bit more of a buzz. Gillespie's come forward now. Liverpool, you sense, want an equaliser. They don't want to lose at home on Steve Nichols' testimonial day. There's a lot of smiles out there, but I think Liverpool now is just a wee bit more business-like about this. Nickel himself, the Patterson, and now little Sammy Lee scurrying away down that right-hand side as he did for so many years. Now Waddle on the counter. Burst of pace from him. Looks for the one-two with McAnally. He gets it eventually. <laughs> really want to be too happy he had to run for that ball <laughs> it's McAnally Peter Reid doesn't have to run for this one right of Blackburn Rovers and this might drop for McAnally he can keep this in he pulled it back well but Steve Nickel was there again Because the real Liverpool, the Liverpool playing in the Premiership, have failed to score in five successive Premier League games, though they did rattle five past Fulham, or I should say Robbie Fowler did anyway, the other night in the Coca-Cola Cup. That'll have done them the world of good, because the pressure's on, the longer that goes, um, I think the more nervous they get. And I know it was only Robbie who scored the goal, but I think everybody will be happy that they've got five goals. Doesn't matter where they come from. A nice relief for everybody by the way if you're wondering where the aforementioned mr fowler is this afternoon he's with the england under 21 squad otherwise he'd have been out there that's yeah, a nice step up for the boy uh maybe a little bit early nobody was really thinking of it just yet but he won't disgrace himself if called upon here's steve nickel there we go just forced a little bit wide now dalgleish not this time well, the cop are almost trying to suck the ball into the net every time Dalglish gets it. It is, the motor ball goes up that end now. Everybody's wanting Kenny, Kenny to get it to his feet. Isn't it a shame that the cop is going to be uh, no more, as it were, from Christmas? It is a shame, and it's, it's, a, it's a sad talking point on Merseyside. Uh, next season, it'll be seated. But I think, to comply with the Taylor report and everything, I think we at Liverpool, more so than probably any other club, we should set our stall the right way and make it all seated. But what happened with Hillsborough? Matteo. Nobody, any club, wants to ever see anything like that happen again. And if that's going to help being seated, well, so be it. Here, here to that. But it will be a sad time. 
Draw a couple points. Reed to right. Patterson's interception. It's dropped for Kenny Dalgleish. Come on, Sammy. Sammy leaves right now, Dalgleish. He wants that goal, and the crowd wants it for him. I think he just gets caught in two minds, whether to go for the far side or go for this near one. If you just, just check a little bit, in the end, just hits a little bit too straight. I'll tell you what, Phil, it reminds me of those days when he used to curl those into the top oh, corner. Well, that's what I mean. I could yeah. see him knowing him, playing with him, knowing what he's capable of. He's, he's gone in there, but he's also been able to sort of strike them right in the near post as well. And I think he's been just caught in two minds. Now, what can Great Britain do here? They lead by a goal to nil, remember? This is Hughes of Tranmere into McAnelly of nowhere in particular at the moment. Bayern Munich still hold his registration, but uh, you can take it from me, he will not be appearing against Norwich City. He's even appeared for Sky Sports football team, and that really is, I can tell you, having played for them, scraping the barrel. Richard Keyes is even in that team. Here's Sammy Lee. Matteo patching it up. He thought he'd be playing for Liverpool today, but uh, he'll take his chances. He's playing against them. Nickel, now Paul Stewart, behind Nickel this time, and Hughes gets it away, now Waddle. To be honest, that fellow's worth his entrance money alone, how he's, he's performed today, showing everything what's good about the game. Great skill, great vision, showing a good appetite for the game basically. I'll tell you what, he'd like a goal. He hasn't scored for Sheffield Wednesday yet this season, Chris Waddle. Yeah, but he's probably made about 99% of the goals for them. If you ever watch him play there? He's a fantastically entertaining player to watch. Chris there's, not, there's not too many of them knocking about these days. Sorry to say. There's Sammy Lee. And Steve Nichols. Ball. Cut out by Davis. Waddle again. His walk. Davis and Matteo. Peter Reed. Funny how things have worked out for him this year. He started as the manager of Manchester City. Lost that job and he's back now as a player with Southampton. What odds would you have got on all that happening at the start of the season? It's, it's an incredible situation at, uh, at Manchester City. After four games and I'm doing so well, basically. Okay, he hadn't sort of, he hadn't got off to a good start, but after four games, you know, you, you look at Liverpool win the first three games. And he could have sort of foreseen what was going to happen then. Walk to Matteo. McAnally's on the far post and James is there before him. <laughs> Julian Dix. And Sammy Lee makes something of it. Mm. Liverpool nil. The Great Britain 11 assembled through few hundred phone calls from Steve Nichol last week, one. And Steve was telling me he'd been on the phone most of last week. It is, I've had a testimonial here myself and it, it's difficult trying to organise your game. Because uh, again, the clubs are in a, in a position where they don't want the players injured, they don't really want to release them, but they know everybody when you're playing certain games, you want that little bit of help. And managers, managers have been really good. 
Leads ball long for Waddle, and the unconventional piece of goalkeeping by James does work. Yes, um, Brian Robson is due to play, so is David Rokas, Landmark Haitley, but they all picked up injuries. Now here's Douglas. In the home game, I, I played against an England 11. I'm trying to organise the players to come, getting them, getting the release, and I think it's really, really hard. Peter Reid again with the outside of the foot. Lovely skill to watch that. Don Hutchison is Nickel. Oh, nice dummy by Nickel. But let's be forward to Dalgleish. Now Mo Johnson. There seems to be a little bit more movement about the Liverpool team in this second half. Lee into Hutchison. And again, Steve Bruce is the man who breaks it all up. And he's getting one or two boos. And you don't like to hear that, as Phil was saying in a testimonial. But look at Matteo here. McAnally's in the middle. He's made a very good run indeed. Matteo fails to find him and gets a bit of a mouthful from McAnally for his trouble. Well, I think Steve Bruce as well, because he'd made a hell of a run up the far end of the pitch. He just needed to pull him back. It was just Dominic in experience which picked the wrong pass basically he's trying to find Alan McAnally and he puts it in no man's land I tell you Alan McAnally is out there for real isn't he he is he's desperate to score he's been dashing about to get in that box all the time Nickel to Dalgleish Kenny Dalgleish much much more involved in the second half again and, uh, well he's thinking to raise that, 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 that ball like that and he's still getting a clap isn't he <laughs> <laughs> used to boo me for doing things like that the clap these days <laughs> ah, that is Kenny nostalgia is a wonderful thing Phil it's <laughs> Waddle Oh, lovely ball to walk. And a chance of a second goal. Goes begging again. He's had his chances, Johnny Walk. What an absolute tremendous ball. And he's not just played a couple. He's played about a dozen like that, yeah. hasn't he? It's the, the pass, it's weighted. The weight of it's not too far ahead. Where Look at Julian Dix here. And that's a penalty. Brought down by Richard Goff. Now, who takes the penalty? Is it Dalgleish or is it Nicola? It's got to be one of those two. Well, I think it's going to be Stephen Nicola. It's going to be Nicola. He's, he's going up there. I think the last time he scored a goal, maybe it was the European Cup final and no penalties. Well, he, was well, he might have been the one that missed, actually. Well, he was in that team that beat Roma 4-2 on penalties. Now, is Steve Nicola going to crown his great day with a goal? Oh dear. He's been taking lessons off John Aldrich there, and only John can do that stutter. <laughs> well, who wrote the script for this? Yeah. He's fired. <laughs> oh. oh, that should never, never happen. On your testimonial day, you miss a penalty. He should have at least made him take it again. With Sammy Lee. Dalgleish. <laughs> well, he goes down in the penalty area, and there might be one or two people are saying, in his heyday, that would have been a penalty in front <laughs> of the I was cop. waiting for something like that. <laughs> I was waiting for something like that. Now, here's McAnally. And this is the goal that he deserves. It isn't. He really has been playing very well, Alan McAnally. He must have taken the eye of one or two people. Well, that nice bit of skill. Let's have a look at that penalty again, Phil. Yes, no doubts there. Would have been a... Oh, nickel. 
That's whether it be in a testimonial or any other game, that's a penalty in anybody's eyes. And then at the other end, Alan McAnally, as we're saying, trying his legs off there to score a goal. Walk. After all the good passes Chris Waddle's made, John Walk gives him a hospital ball there down the bottom corner. Here's Steve Bruce. Davis. Now Alan Wright. Well, I'm sure he would have wanted to hit that across the face of the goalkeeper, ideally. Yeah, it always gives you the better chance if you're hitting across from you, maybe getting in running forward or something. And he's hit that at a decent height for there, David James there. It's easy from here, isn't it? Oh, well. Right in towards Davis. Cut out by Torben Pinkney. Now, I think we're going to see another name from the past another golden oldie it's alan hansen the great liverpool defender who starred alongside phil thompson many many times for liverpool it's good to see him isn't it it is it's marvelous to see him see him back he played just well, a couple of hours ago rigor mortis is probably set in there <laughs> but uh, i don't think there's a decent knee between the between the two of us these days but he's so cool, he's so calm. And the bullets are flying. Here's Waddle. And this is offside against McAnally. <laughs> Alan would be well pleased there if he went across the goal. Here's Tom Hutchison for Liverpool. He believes. Cracking back, as they say. Keith Curl is back on the pitch for the Great Britain side, and Richard Goff has come off. We'll try to keep you in touch with all these changes, but as you know, in testimonial matches, they tend to happen a bit fast, frenetic, and furious. We'll do our best. Alan Wright. Waddle the entire width of the pitch and picks out Peter Reid. That's in place. Oh, razzle dazzle from Peter Reid. Long for McAnally. No touch yet for Alan Hansen. Really, he'll like it that way. He'll like it that way. Oh, and there's a chance for Walk. And a great save from David James. It really was. Al seems to have really instilled a lot of confidence in the side. <laughs> <laughs> the defence has really settled down yeah, since he came on. Up. Something tremendous. Walk, he's had three great chances now. Here is Alan Hansen, the elegant playmaking defender of old for Liverpool. There are many who feel he never has been replaced. Well, I'd agree with that. Oh, Johnson was a man threading that one through. You played alongside Alan Hansen many, many times, and I know he really rated you as well. So you can Thanks, just Thanks. pay tribute. I'll pay you later. <laughs> now, the guy was unbelievable. Um, playing throughout Europe and everything, especially away from home, when everything was difficult, it was all hands to the pump. It was great to have a fella like that. We were always very composed, but that was great, especially breaking forward when it needed it. Nothing too erratic. Stepping out, picking the right pass. Never, ever flustered the lad. Now he's got Chris Waddle. 
who just finds Peter Reid. Walk is up on the far post if he can be found. Here he is. Now that was clever. Good vision to pick out Chris Waddle. Now is he going to try one? We were talking about great centre backs, uh, Richard Goff and everything. But this fella, Alan Hansen, was the best centre back. John Hutchison, Mo Johnson, and that's the equaliser. Mo Johnson of Everton well, scores an equaliser for Liverpool. I think that's the first time an Evertonian has been clapped on the goal, I think, by the cop. But he did well, he was stretching for it. <laughs> and the most relieved man oh, is Steve Nichol. Good ball by Don Hutchinson. That could have ended up anywhere, anywhere. And he's done well to keep that down. And what's Howard Kendall thinking, I wonder? Well, it's an interesting situation with Mo. But he's had a good goal today. He's gone in there, he's not sort of had a, had a laser round. He's enjoyed it. But Liverpool have always looked like scoring a goal in this second half. More so than in the first. Now, here's Del Gleish. That's not a bad turn of pace, is it, at the age of 42? Here's Mo Johnson. Oh, that's good. And Torben Pinkney. Well, that's a centre half. That's a centre half. Reminds me of myself, me heyday. It's only 66 yards wide. I'd have been happy with a throw-in. Now then, coming up on Sky Sports, Super Sunday next week features Ipswich Town against high-riding Leeds United. Leeds right back in form, of course, and up there now challenging at the top. And now here's Mo Johnston. And a great save from Eric Nixon. To be fair, there doesn't look much wrong with Mo Johnson here. If anybody's looking for strikers, he's quite quick. Nips in between the two centre-backs. There's an half-decent shot and a good save by Eric Nixon. And, uh, it's the angle of the post and bar and then Stewart. Well, it's livened up the game. Seems to be a lot more people making runs for one another in the Liverpool team. That was Gary Gillespie's header here. It's a difficult ball to keep down, and he's done very well there. Eric didn't seem to know where that was. But he's done well to get that on target. It's nice the game livened up, the crowd's livened up. Well, before uh, Mo Johnston burst through looking for his second goal, I was trying to tell you about uh, other programmes coming up on Sky as Joey Jones prepares to come on. <laughs> <laughs> Where have we seen that before? Another tremendous character, Joey. On Monday, we've got Blackburn against Sheffield United, Alan Shearer and all. That's uh, live Monday night football next week. Not tomorrow, of course. No Premier League fixtures this weekend. Deed. Here is Hansen. Hansen, Walk, Dalglish, Sammy Lee reunited in a Liverpool team today. And soon to be on the pitch, the quiet, unassuming Joey Jones. <laughs> A shy, introverted, modest character, Joey. Yes, like that anyway. <laughs> but what a favourite around here. Very much so. Is that a testimonial game and uh, testimonial function? And it was a uh, reuniting the 77 European Cup winning team. And there was what some great players there was in that team. And all the, all of the people in the crowd in the crowd wanted to see and hear from was Joey Jones. Well, the man's a cult figure, isn't he? He is. And there there he, he is. <laughs> so Torben picked it. 
Now, is he going up? No, Steve Nichol is coming off. The man who's attracted all these stars to Anfield for his testimonial. And off down the tunnel he goes. And I think he'll be doing a lap of honour too. Meanwhile, on the pitch, here's Waddle. Now, here's the lap of honour for Steve Nichol. The touching of hands with the fans who absolutely adore the versatility and consistency of this man who's played 433 times for Liverpool and you could count the number of bad games, I should think, on two hands. Yeah, it's great for the guy. It's a good idea to go around now. You save it till at the end of the game. You seem to get a lot of kids and children who come on the pitch and you, basically the hero would be sort of mastering it in loads of bodies. I think it's a nice touch now, just going round. He deserves every crap that he's getting out there. He's going to be shattered by the time he gets back. He's got the scarf on. The family are here watching. His wife and two children. It's a very, very special day for Steve Nichol and how he deserves it after 12 years of great service at Anfield. Meanwhile, here's Alan McAnally with the goal that's been threatening, and he's got it. All of that while Steve Nicholl was getting all the plaudits, McAnally stolen away to score for Great Britain. 2-1 to them. It's a goal he's been looking for all day. Makes a good run, actually. Runs across the line first. Takes in. He's a big lad, David James. He does well. Nice nice control. Not like we've seen with Paul Davis before. And he does exactly how he, what he wanted. He's deserved he's not, goal, isn't he? Yeah, he has. He has. He's been looking for one. That's David Johnson, who's up there. The grey-haired figure these days. And... Uh, it really is a kind of parade of golden oldies, isn't it? Tell you what, the average age is getting dragged up, well, pushed upwards, should I say. I'm not sure he even knows that Great Britain have scored, you know, Steve Nichol. I don't think he'd be really bothered at this moment in time. He's, he's milking this for everything at the moment. reaction to put it kindly Julian Dix for Mo Johnston Liverpool look for an equaliser here and here's Paul Davis who's been coolness personified Joey that number 14 he looks a bit like Johan Cruyff really doesn't he Joey Jones <laughs> out there <laughs> Joey the ball Walk. Johan, somebody anyway. <laughs> well, there's a festive carnival atmosphere around Anfield. There's been a warmness surrounding the whole occasion. In the dressing room, Steve Nichol, there he is, alone with his thoughts and a smile for the camera. Well done, Steve. You deserved it all. I think it's been better, as I was explaining earlier on, the 90 minutes can drag if the game doesn't... or well, somebody doesn't set it alight. And the second half's been a lot better. Chris Waddle looking to cause more mischief. Now here's Mo Johnson, another really who's looking to take the eye of it. Any clubs interested in signing him now? Dalgleish. Good ball for Gary Gillespie. Rampaging forward. Peter Reid. Played Long Stewart's in there. It's a good header away by Keith Curl. A good piece of defending. Knew he was under pressure. Looks as though he's might going to get the best place for it to go, the ball. If you just a little flick on, help it on its way. 
a good piece of defending. Knew he couldn't head it sort of forward. Sidewood will put it on for a corner. Just flick it on, on towards the corner flag. Good touch by John Hutchison. And here's Dalgleish. He's still got it. Well, you almost pray for him to score, don't you? <laughs> Eric Nixon was the spoil sport. <laughs> I guess he was a few things he was going to go down there, can he? David Johnson. It's almost like a Liverpool who's who today. Look at this. One of the new brigade. Don's got a great future in the game. He keeps his head about him. Football is crying out for people leap. McAnally again. He wants another one. He hasn't quite got it. Football's crying out for midfielders who can get forward and score goals. And Don was playing for me, he's playing in midfield. And all of a sudden, it's a nice touch here. Good strike. Hansen. Hutchison back to Dix. It's a kind of Liverpool through the ages 11 they've got out there now. One or two others thrown in like Mo Johnson. Stewart. The Great Britain team lead 2-1. Nobody cares too much about that. It's, uh, as the politicians say, the feel-good factor has been very high here today. A nice occasion. <laughs> Joey Jones wanted to head it out of Eric Nixon's hands there. Johnson to Johnson. <laughs> oh, we need his Craig now, don't we? Yes. It would make the commentator's job absolutely impossible. Well, like talcum powder, wouldn't it, all over the place? Numberless Gillespie to number seven Dalgleish and away by Bruce Hutchison all girl was having none of it because it might only be a testimonial but I'm not going to give you one Dalgleish Canelli, I must say he's looked fit and sharp and pacey and hungry, isn't he, out there? He's had a good game. <laughs> he's had a good game. <laughs> Not too happy with that, though. <laughs> I think Alan Hansen was making a little point. Bring on the oxygen, eh, Ken? Well, Bobby Gould, of course, played the other day for Coventry City's reserves against Bolton and scored. This is Mo Johnson. Stewart! And he couldn't quite get the angle for his header. And I think in all of that, the whistle has been blown. The Great Britain eleven have won the game by two goals to one here. It's been a thoroughly pleasant occasion. Everybody enjoy. And against the upright from Berardi. Lyon. On to Easter, who is onside and has a clear chance. Will it go in? Was it in? It is now. Now, Mr. Thomas is taking a long walk towards his linesman, gets the thumbs up, and
and the goal stands. Not cleared on the line by Neil. So 1 0 to Everton. Full case. The booing won't put him off. He still a nice little touch and Ferrari a good stretch. Away he goes and tried unselfishly to set it up for Isto. Now tries the shot and brings out a save of international class from Ray Clements. And here's the second surely now from O'Keefe or has he pushed it too far wide? Tried to be too deliberate about it.